A little bit earlier on, we showed you how angry passions come out in the open when some people feel threatened by their Muslim neighbors. But can intolerance like that ever be funny? Well, one Muslim filmmaker says yes, it can. And she actually says she wants to put the fun back into fundamentalism with a TV sitcom that debuts next Tuesday on Canadian TV. It takes aim at bias against Muslims, but the big question is, will it make people laugh or take offense at a show called Little Mosque on the Prairie? Let's see what you think. Here's entertainment correspondent Brooke Anderson. I'm here to for North Americans who've come to view Muslims with suspicion, this sitcom provides a glimpse into a world that will feel both very familiar and very strange. I've been planning this for months. It's not like I dropped a bomb on him. But if Dad thinks it's suicide, so be it. This is Allah's plan for me. Oh my. Now, I'm not throwing my life away. I'm moving to the prairies. To run a mosque? Step away from the bag. You're not going to paradise today. It turns out the passenger isn't a terrorist, but an imam on his way to a remote Muslim community. The show finds humor in the all-too-common misunderstandings that come when you take Islam at a rural Canadian location and mix in universal themes. What's the charge? Flying while Muslim? No one's ever done this before. This is the first time anyone's you know, combined comedy with a North American Muslim life experience. Zarka Nawaz, a Canadian of Pakistani origin, created Little Mosque on the Prairie, drawing from her own experience of being Muslim in a small town. It created a lot of fodder for comedy, and I thought, wow, you know, why not use this material for a sitcom? The Canadian Broadcasting Corporation picked up eight episodes, hoping that the series' comedic look at Muslim life will resonate with viewers in a post-9-11 era. And there's a lot of curiosity about the Muslim community and how it interacts with the world at large. Andrew Wallenstein with The Hollywood Reporter thinks it just might gain footing. You know, I think a great comedy is the kind of comedy that tips sacred cows. And there's probably no more sacred cow right now than stereotypes in the Muslim community. So it's got a great chance. Are you part of a sleeper cell? Don't no, no, that. Not. Well, what is your connection to Al-Qaeda? What is your connection to journalism? But the show's creator emphasizes the themes in Little Mosque aren't specifically Muslim. Please tell me I'm adopted. The show talk, you know, deals with relationships between people, between husbands and wives and their kids, between non-Muslims and Muslims. It does a lot of things on a lot of different levels. That's the privilege of living in a country with freedom. Freedom? To do what? Fan the flames of hatred? Oh, isn't it Muslim preachers like yourself who do that, huh? I got news for you, Johnny Jihad. Nawaz hopes her efforts will not only entertain, but educate. Laughter is the best medicine when it comes to um, bridging the gaps between people. I was joking. Muslims around the world are known for their sense of humor. I did not know that. That was another joke. Oh, oh. What is that? Some kind of signal? The show's creators have taken into account Islamic religious sensibilities and believe they've struck in the balance to avoid offense. Brooke Anderson, CNN, Hollywood. All right, so do you find that funny or no laughing matter? And could a show like that ever make it on American TV? Let's ask our out in the open panel now, Roland Martin, Kamal Nawash, and Jank Huger. What do you guys think? I like it's hilarious. I think it's good because, you know, most people, unfortunately, it, when Muslims come on the air and so on in the United States, usually they don't smile, they're very serious and so on. I think this is great. It shows we are really human beings. When, we, when Muslims get together, we do laugh. We do make fun of ourselves. We do make fun of others. And but I think to show that it's great. How do you pierce through that sole stereotype that exists in this country, which is, among some Americans, mm -hmm. Muslims are bad. Yeah, well, People, I mean, we do it all. The we do it all the time on our radio show, and and I nobody makes more suicide bomber jokes than I do. And the reason is, once you make fun of something, people go, oh, "Wait a minute, you're right. That's silly." You know, of course not all Muslims are suicide bombers, and of course they're not all bad guys. I don't know why I ever thought that. And, you know, and everybody, everybody has to break through these things. Yes. And, you know, in TV they said, oh, a, a show about Jews in New York will never work until Seinfeld. They said a, a black woman can't ever be a t talk show until Oprah. Right. So, I mean, I'm going to sell two and a half Muslims, and everybody and, loves Muhammad. And, 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 so, and, and that is the value of entertainment. When you, and we have a history of that. When you look at uh, what uh, Dick Gregory did with comedy, when you look at Richard Pryor, uh, when you look at lots of television shows, 
but unfortunately we have some people who are too wedded to PC. ABC had a reality show where there was a white neighborhood in Austin, Texas, largely white. And they were going to have uh, the, the neighbors choose the family. So it was a black family, a gay family, an Asian family. They cut. They say, don't air the show because it's going to upset people. No, those shows allow you to talk about common day issues, and so you use entertainment for that effect. So entertainment can be crazy laughter that means nothing, but you can also teach. Do they? Do you really teach through shows like this? Do I, they guess, I think this show. People go wild. I think this show. I think that. I, I sound like an idiot. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, you, you do learn from those kind of shows. When F, FX is a show Black White. I think people learn by watching the reality that people went through being painted black, painted white. It was very you, raw experience right. as a viewer. There's actually several comedians that are popping up now where Muslims making fun of themselves and talking about the different experiences. And I think this could do more good than all the think tanks in the country put together. I think humor works. It shows that we are just like everyone else. We are typical Americans. I happen to be a Muslim. I happen to be an Arab. I don't have any bombs on me. I like to laugh. I like right, to do everything else. I like to do everything else every American likes and to do. Final, final thought. Beyond laughter is how bad are things in America between Muslims and not? It's very bad. It is. It's, 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 it's but very I'll tell you, bad. I'll tell you what's driving it is that conservative talk show hosts on TV and on radio, and they keep coming. And Virgil Goode, a, a United States congressman from Virginia, coming out saying he's afraid of more Muslims in the country. But if we have the sh comedy shows and the talk this shows that bring it out in the open and that talk oh, about it, Virgil Goode is a symptom. Virgil, Virgil Goode is a symptom. We have we have a war. We have 9/11. We have the Iraq War. All this is playing together. We have threats of bombing, we have suicide bombings, we have heads being cut off. All that put together what? is what creates what? that. But very simple, it's harmful because you have Muslims who are American taxpayers, who are hardworking, and they are afraid and they're angry and they're hurt because people are looking at them as terrorists and they're trying to send their kids to college, trying to live the American life and the American dream. That is what is so shameful about this. Roland Martin, Kamal Nawash, Jake Huger. Thank you. Thank you.